So Amos, oh honey, where's like the GLA Goya glass? Oh, thank you. All right, so Amos, let's get into Amos. Ready? Amos. It's after Joel. <clears throat> The words of Amos, one of the shepherds of Tekoya, <clears throat> what he saw concerning Israel two years after the earthquake, when Uzziah was king of Judah and Jeroboam, son of Johash, was king of Israel. He said, the Lord roars from Zion and thunders from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds dry up and the top of Carmel withers. This is what the Lord says for three sins of Damascus. For three sins of Damascus, even four, I will not turn back my wrath because she threshed Gilead with sledges having iron teeth. I will send fire upon the house of Hazel that will consume the fortresses of Ben-Hadad. I will break down the gate of Damascus. I will destroy the king who is in the valley of Avon and the one who holds the scepter in Beth Eden. The people of Aram will go into exile to Kir, says the Lord. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says, for three sins of Gaza, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath, <clears throat> because she took captive whole communities and sold them to Edom. I will send fire upon the walls of Gaza. They will consume her fortresses. I will destroy the king of Ashdod and the ones who hold the scepter in Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron till the last of the Philistines is dead, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. For three sins of Tyr, even four, I will not turn back my wrath because she sold whole communities of captives to Edom, disregarding a treaty of brotherhood. I will send fire upon the walls of Tyr that will consume her fortress. This is what the Lord says, for three sins of Edom, even four, I will not turn back my wrath, because he pursued his brother with a sword, stifling all compassion. His anger raged and his fury flamed. I will send fire upon Temin that will consume the fortresses of Bozrah. This is what the Lord says, for three sins of Ammon, even for four, I will not turn back my wrath because he ripped open the pregnant women of Gilead in order to extend his borders. <clears throat> I will send fire to the walls of Reba that will consume her fortresses and war cries on the day of battle and violent winds on a stormy day. Her kings will go into exile. He and his officials, says the Lord in chapter 2. This is what the Lord says, for three sins of Moab, even four, I will not turn back my wrath because he burned as if to lime the bones of Edom's king. I will send fire upon Moab that will consume the fortresses of Kuroth. <clears throat> Moab will go down in great tumult, amid war cries and the blast of the trumpet. I will destroy her rulers and kill all her officials with him, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says for three sins of Judah. For four, even four, I will not turn back my wrath because they have rejected the law of the Lord and have not kept his decrees. Because they have been led astray by false gods, <clears throat> the gods their ancestors followed. I will send fire upon Judah that will consume the fortresses of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says for three sins of Israel. Even for four, I will not turn back my wrath. They sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. They trample on the head of the poor as upon the dust of the ground and deny justice to the oppressed. Father and son use the same girl and so profane my holy name. They lie down beside every altar on garments taken in pledge. In the house of their God, they drink wine taken as fines. I destroy the Amorites before them, though he was tall as the cedars and strong as the oaks. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots below. I brought you up out of Egypt and I led you 40 years in the desert to give you the land of the Amorites. I also raised up prophets from among your sons and Nazarites from among your young men. 
Is this not true, people of Israel, declares the Lord? But you made the Nazarenes drink the Nazarites drink wine and commanded the prophets not to prophesy. Now then I will crush you as a cart crushes when loaded with grain. The swift will not escape, the strong will not muster their strength, and the warrior will not save his life. The archer will not stand his ground, the fleet soldier will not get away, and the horseman will not save his life. Even the bravest warriors will flee naked on that day, declares the Lord. Chapter 3. Hear the word of the Lord has spoken against you. O people of Israel, against the whole family I brought up out of Egypt, you only have I chosen, all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your sins. Do two walk again together unless they've agreed to do so? Does a lion roar in the thicket when he has no prey? Does he growl in his den when he has caught nothing? Does a bird fall into the trap of the ground where no sin has been set or snare? Does a trap spring up from the earth when there is nothing to catch? When a trumpet sounds in a city or the people tremble? When disaster comes to a city, has not the Lord caused it? Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing the plans to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The sovereign Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Proclaim to the fortress of Ashdod, to the fortress of Egypt. Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria and the great rest within her and the oppression among her people. They do not know how to do right, declares the Lord, who, who hoard plunder and loot in their fortresses. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, an enemy will overrun the land. He will pull down your strongholds and plunder your fortresses. This is what the Lord says, as a shepherd saves from the lion's mouth, only two legs, bo bones, or a piece of an ear, so will the Israelites be saved, those who sit in Samaria on the edge of their beds and in Damascus on their couches. Hear this and testify against the house of Jacob, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. On the day I punish Israel for his sins, I will destroy the altars of Bethel. The horns of the altar will be cut off and, I f and fall to the ground. I will tear down the winter house along with the summer house and houses adorned with ivory will be destroyed and the mansions will be demolished, declares the Lord. Chapter 4, hear the word of the Lord, you cows of Bajan, on, O Mount Sinai, on Mount Samaria, you women who oppress the poor and crush the needy and say to your husbands, bring us some drink. The sovereign Lord has sworn by his holiness, the time will surely come when you will be taken away with the hooks. The last of you with fish hooks, you will go straight out through breaks in the wall and you will be cast out toward Hermon, says the Lord. Go to Bethel and sin. Go to Gilgal, sin yet more. Bring your sacrifice every morning, every your tithe every three years. Burn leavened bread as you think off as a thank offering and brag about your free will offering. Burnt boss boast about them with Israelites, for this is what the Lord will do. I gave you empty stomachs in every city and lack of bread in every town, yet you have not returned to me. I also withheld rain from when the harvest was still there and moths away. I sent rain on one town, but withheld it from another. One field had rain, another had none, and dried up. People staggered from town to town for water, but did not get enough to drink. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. Many times I struck your gardens and vineyards. I, I struck them with blit and mildew. Locusts devoured your fig and olive trees. Yet you have not slandered or returned to me, declares the Lord. I set plagues among you, as did Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword, along with their captured horses. I filled your nostrils with the stench of your camps. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. I overthrow some of you, as I overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah. You are like the burning bush, snatched out from the fire. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord will do to Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. 
He who forms the mountains creates the wind and reveals his thoughts to man. He who turns back to darkness and treads the high places of the earth. The earth almighty is his name. The Lord almighty is his name. Praise the Lord. There's a lot going on here. A lot of revelation that we pray for. Okay, chapter 12 in Revelation. A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven. An enormous red dragon and seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. His tall tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky, flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of them, the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour the child. The moment it was born, she gave birth to a son, a male child who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God, to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for a thousand two hundred days. There was war in heaven. Michael and the angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but it was not strong enough. They lost their battle in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. His, this ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He, will, he was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have I come to the salvation. Now have come salvation, the power and the kingdom of God, the almighty as his, of his Christ. For the accuser of the brother who accuses them before God Day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, fury, because he knows his day is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the ground, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was <clears throat> given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for, God, for her <clears throat> in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, <clears throat> times and a half. Out of the serpent's reach, then from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like river to overtake the woman and swept her away with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening his mouth, swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And the dragon stood on the sword side of the shore. Praise the Lord. So this is so many things right now, so many things to ask God to show us. The end time is near. These are these are vis visions, dreams. These are prophecies that have been spoken. And we just need to discernment and wisdom to know what's going on. But we thank God that he is a mighty, mighty God. He is able to save. And if you come to him and just lay your head at his, at his feet, you don't have to know everything, but you just know you're in the secret place. <coughs> so I encourage you now, read the word with me. Just rest in it. Ask God to show you what he's showing me or you, you know, what he's showing us as a body, basically, and what we as a body need to do, which I know for number one is to be confident in who we are in Christ. And take authority and declare in the atmosphere what he's doing, what he's, what he's done. And give glory to him because that will break down the enemy trying so hard. And we know the end is here because they're trying so hard. So we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word. And we thank you for the, for the, the sisters and brothers that are coming together and praying with us and believing with us. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Let your words be your way to victory. See you next time.